All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, the increasing number of attacks on farmers in Nigeria is leading to people being forced to leave their homes, uh, disruptions to market, and people losing their livelihoods. Now, according to Nigeria Security Tracker, armed groups killed more than 128 farmers and kidnapped 37 others across Nigeria between January and June 2023. In June alone, 19 farmers were killed by non-state armed groups in Borno State in Nigeria, um, um, northern Nigeria. Now, the food insecurity in Nigeria um, has been severely affected, or the food availability has been severely affected by violent conflicts in recent years, including the Boko Haram insurgency in the northeast armed banditry in the Northwest, where there have been several attacks and um, raiding of villages, stealing livestock and food, and killing and displacing farmers. There are farmer heather clashes in the northern central, northwest, or the southwest, and other parts of the country, and separatist agitation in the southeast. Now, these conflicts have made it difficult for farmers to produce food, and for people to access food. As a result, millions of Nigerians are facing food insecurity. And this is a huge problem, especially with the current economic situation in Nigeria. So tonight we're asking, how can we curb food insecurity? How can we make food to become more available in Nigeria? Please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 All right, so ladies, I mean, this is an interesting conversation. Mm. First, because we, we are farmers. I kind of like have an idea what is going on. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. When it comes to um, the, the farming area of like growing of the crop. So if you're not dealing with um, locals, right? You're dealing with, um, what's it called? Herders coming into your farm. If you're not dealing with that, you're dealing with, um, would I call it zero or little access to your farmland based on, you know, bad, very, very bad roads that you have to then now um, deal with, um, what's it called, construction of that road. If you're not dealing with that, you're dealing with break, breaking down, um, the constant breaking down of your equipment. So mm -hmm. every day you're finding yourself going again to your um, technical people to help repair either your tractors or your, even your machines and whatever. If that is not the, the case, you're having issues with workers, right? Mm -hmm. You have people that are not willing to work. You have, you now have to import workers from maybe nearby Bene Republic and all of those things. Like literally, right? If you want to look at um, farming, like in terms of like growing the crop, there is a, a plethora of challenges. Absolutely. Then you're not talking about seedlings that are so expensive, right? Mm -hmm. Then by the time you, you're done with the seedlings, you now have to buy very expensive fertilizers, mm -hmm. very expensive insecticide to keep the pests out of those, you know, crops so that they can grow well and you can get good yields. Then when you're done with that, harvesting it, you know, you are now dealing with, oh, the crop is there, nobody's buying it, mm -hmm. then that is like a major loss and all of that. So, like, they are just a myriad of problems, right? So, I don't know how, if we say we want to curb food insecurity in Nigeria, you know, mm -hmm. first of all, why are we having insecurity in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. I've just said this now from the farmer's perspective. Mm -hmm. Of course, what we're talking about when, when I was um, giving the intro, there's the insecurity part, which is very Huge, major. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. And, you know, there's also the problem of our, the inflation and the devaluation of our Naira and all mm -hmm. of that, that mm -hmm. is also impacting because the, the seedling I would have bought for say 20,000 naira, I'm having to buy that same seedling, that same quantity mm -hmm. for almost like 100,000 naira. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And it's the same yield. It's not like the yield is going to be any different. Mm -hmm. So let me hear your thoughts. Um, mm. yeah. I was, okay. okay, so, sorry, um, Sanze. So for me, first of all, food is life. Food is, um, I, I like this mantra that says that leave no one behind when it comes to food. I think the world is too blessed with resources, and especially a country like Nigeria, that um, hunger really should not be a major problem. But like you rightly said, all the problems that you have highlighted are, are real issues. And um, 
unfortunately, most of the food that we eat and even export are from the northern part of Nigeria. And the northern part of the country has been the worst hit. You know, they've been the worst casualties when it comes to terrorism. Um, again, I, I, I would also want to speak about um, the investments we put in agriculture in Nigeria. Um, for a country with the kind of population that we have, I think we, we need to invest more in agriculture. Um, agriculture is not just about farming. It's the whole value chain. We need to critically look at the value chain from financing to education to seedlings to harvesting to fair trade practices because that's mm -hmm. very, very important. You, if you go to Bainway State, it's crazy because I was talking to someone from Bainway State. Bainway State is supposed to be like one of the richest states in this country because they're the that's food basket of right. the nation. But Bainway State is unfortunately one of the poorest in this country now why is Bainway state that poor it is because i mean they grow the food they plant the food but they have zero knowledge about the practices of how to there is a business side to agriculture and we need we can leave it to people who are not very educated mm. if we want to grow as a nation we need to bring in a lot of um, a lot of expertise you know it can't it can't just be for the selected few we can't we can't see ag agriculture needs to be as popular as entertainment as tech exactly as banking and finance exactly it needs to be that it, it has to have it a lot to... more corporate players exactly exactly Absolutely. exactly so if we find the farmers who are doing all the work who are not very well versed mm. in modern um, ways to increase yield, to have um, better harvest, you know, to do more, to diversify, then food will always, we would always have food insecurity mm. in the country. Mm. You understand? Because again, they will now be at the mercy of terrorism, of um, um, not enough um, workforce, to work in that sector, they would be at the mercy of, I mean, economic inflation and all that. And it, it, again, it will come back to the consumers, you and I, mm -hmm. because again, I mean, the, the market forces would also determine the price of food. If food is not available, mm -hmm. it is only going to be for people who can readily afford it. Mm -hmm. And that means that people at the very low end. And of course, when there is no food, there's poverty. When there's no poverty, there's violence. Mm -hmm. And it goes on and on. Mm -hmm. So. Let me hear your thoughts, um, Sandy. Well, um, Bill Gates made a prediction in, um, what is it called, in a couple of years, maybe 10 years or 15 years from now, there's going to be like food scarcity. And so I was checking globally what is the major cause of food insecurity. Mm. And one of the top three on the list is climate change and global warming, True. scarcity of land for farming, mm. and then uh, inadequate supply of water for irrigation. There are other this poverty, technological barriers. But my the point I'm getting to is among these top lists: climate change, scarcity of land, inadequate supply of water for no irrigation. Concern. Nigeria doesn't have an issue no with, problem that, with that, right? Yeah. Nigeria yeah. is so blessed mm -hmm. with a predictable weather such that you know within this month, so at least within yeah. May, um, within March till September, Mountains we have yeah. rainfall. Yeah. Yeah. Within November to maybe. March next for the next yeah, there is like dry season yeah. right and so I would say that from my perspective or from what I've studied and observed that one of the reasons for the looming or persistent food and persistent food insecurity in Nigeria is the fact that we don't have a good value system mm -hmm. or appreciation system right and here is why I'm saying it like you rightly said Food is so important, yeah. like more important than tech, even though that tech helps us to like maximize food production, right? Yeah. But food is so important that we don't we don't reward people yeah. who put in that effort to provide. Because if people are if we Nigerians actually invested way more value in food and agriculture than we did in politics or entertainment, then we would know that if there is insecurity or if there is terrorist attacks or kidnappings going on in those major places that we know that our food is coming from yeah. we should prioritize it if in Benue they're having flooding they are having bad roads or they are having uh local communal crisis. Yeah. communal crisis we should know okay mm. food
food, no matter what is going on, food and shelter, food, clothing, shelter, those are like the top Mastery, three yeah. uh, basic human mm -hmm. needs, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I think topping the chart is food because food. you can wear one cloth for like 50 days, but you can't not eat for 10 days. That's literally killing yourself. All right, and so if we would learn, we as individuals and the government as well would learn to prioritize and value where this food is coming from, and say, so, okay, on on our list of the budget for this year, what are what are the major food producers in this country? What are their problems? Let's 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 fix it. And then by the time you fix it, like there are other states in Nigeria, like there are some eastern states that yeah. they don't prioritize farming they just do subsistence farming just for me myself and i mm. but by the time they look and see oh there's development coming in like these people are being prioritized then all that massive land that they have that they're waiting to build a, a, a 50 acre of their father's house so they can have events in it they can say <laughs> okay no seriously they, uh, have you seen Ibo people build houses <laughs> <laughs> I saw one house when I went to Mama's village in uh, Sandy. <laughs> it is the end of the Italian already, from the beginning to the end. Yeah. I said, one human being. You realize being. that you don't need all yeah. that land. You just yeah. need one house, a compound to have your events, and then the remaining one, you can turn it into a farm. Or if you don't want to be the farmer, you can lease it out, mm. right? So when people see that there is actually a reward coming from agriculture, then it would encourage people, and it would even encourage foreign investors. Yeah, mm. yeah. I so I, I like what you said, Sansi. So mm. let me, let me, let me, let me, let me try to attempt, because mm. I know that you see there has been a lot of serious talk mm. about what's it called a Greek, mm. and I know that certain state governor, governments yeah. are actually taking it seriously. Yeah. But you see. Our major problem, it has to, first of all, we have to deal with the mind part of this yes. issue. Mm -hmm. Which is, even when I was watching Idris Elba's gold new documentary that he has mm -hmm. on YouTube, mm -hmm. fantastic documentary by the way, I, mm -hmm. I can recommend for everyone to watch it. Okay. How they urge South Africans to drop their holes and their whatever and go and start doing mining. It's the same thing in Nigeria. We were known for our agriculture. granite pyramids. We were known for agriculture. Cold, cold, yeah, you know? yeah. So cutting, we were known for agriculture, but we took up all of those things, dumped them on the side for oil. So if at all that we need to solve this problem, yeah. we mm -hmm. need to now do reverse engineering. engineering. Yeah. Go back to the basics. But you see, for us to be able to do that, we must now find it, I like the, what you said about being attractive, right? We must find the attractiveness in it. To be able to now encourage more people to come into that sector. And that's why when Diola was talking about corporate engagement, mm -hmm. we need those kinds of engagement. Yeah. We can't have just petty people just saying they are yeah. farmers. Yeah. No. People that have like real time business sense, you know, yeah. come into the sector. Because now, like you rightly said, those top three problems, they are not our problem. Climate us. change a little a bit little because bit. Yeah. our weather is changing, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Things are changing. The time you were expecting rain, you did not see rain, it's coming through. No. But at least it's still a bit manageable compared mm -hmm. to parts of the world that the issues with flood. Lagos State Government did something at some point where they partnered with Kebi State Government. Yeah. That was where the lake rice came. Mm -hmm. So Lagos and Kebi yeah. made lake. LA and KE made mm -hmm. lake rice. And for me, I felt that that was a beautiful partnership because guess what? They have the farmland to be able to produce en masse. Yeah. Lagos has the capacity to, Commercial com capacity. Yes, to commercialize yeah. it. So imagine if we start to have those kinds of interstate partnerships. Mm -hmm. You see, it is this problem of I go every month, I work home, I know work, there's federal location. Yeah. You, you will never think outside of the box. Right. So people, governments, state governors, even with their arable lands that they have, they are not thinking agriculture. Yeah. Even for people that have farmlands, like for us now, we have hectares of land, mm. right? To get C or four. Do you understand? Mm. You, you, as a farmer, if you are farming, you know, and it is confirmed that you're farming, your C or four is supposed to be free. You know why I say so? If they give you free C or four, then they are serious about you taking that your farm business yeah. to the next level. Right. But that C or four might be tied to a condition that you must make sure that you maintain farming. It is only with a C or O. And all of those things that you can now use those properties as collateral to be able for to finance, access yeah. financing. Yeah. For us to be able to expand the land mm -hmm. and expand the produce and production. expand all of those production, yeah. Yeah. you will need to have external funding. You cannot do uh, small, small funding. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot that goes into food security. A lot. Right? And right now in our country, it's just like, let's picture it now. Mm -hmm. We are in the days of when Joseph was inside the jail, when they told him that, 
uh, uh, farming is coming. Yeah. That's what Bill the Gates warning. is warning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You understand? So what are we doing as a government? Mm -hmm. We're not even trying. Now I'm hearing, you were telling us now that he's mopping up seedlings and all of those things, right? All of these things are happening for people that are thinking, for people that are looking at it and seeing, they've seen the future that if we do not position ourselves, mm -hmm. do you understand? Mm -hmm. But our government was still sleeping. Mm. Look at Lagos Ibado Expressway. I mean, look at Look at, now. Look at uh, Ibado, Ife. Oh, look at, look at, let me tell you, when I went to Amsterdam for a conference, I then decided to take a bus from Amsterdam to Paris before now um, taking a train to, to, to south of France. Mm -hmm. Do you know that between that Amsterdam and Paris, Sanzi, mm -hmm. is just land upon, like farmlands stretch. Mm -hmm. See, gi gigantic windmills. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Gigantic windmills. You will see the ones that are doing the crop farming. The one that is on all of that bed. This is our lake. You they talk about kidnappers. Is it not inside those bushes that the kidnappers are hiding? If we clear up all of those lands mm -hmm. and people actually start to, you know, farm in all our forests that we have, we will we will not be so when when the world is complaining, mm -hmm. we will be yeah. selling food to well, the world. Well, sorry to cut you, but on the other hand, I think I would like to like the same example you gave about um what was the place you went to? Amsterdam. Amsterdam, yes. I would say that when I travel, which you are not, you've been, you lived in the north. When I'm tra uh, driving through the north, maybe like from um, Kaduna to, to Zario, to Zario. So you they are like farmland. Farmland. Because it's not and you enough. See corn. I know it's not enough, but I have to commend the northerners. You at least get to some, you see like this massive lands and you see, or whether you're taking the train or whatever, you see they're putting that land to good use. You see people cultivating their lands and just, hectares of cornfields right but i wish lagos would imitate that because in, in the southeast southwest mm. south 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 there's a lot of vacant lands and bushes we don't need well conserve nature even if you are farming the tree is still nature conservation mm. you know so we need to like maximize those lands because mm. I, I, I like let's, yeah, let's, let's take a break right when we come back from that break we'll continue the conversation and take your comments stay with us we'll be right back All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're having a conversation <laughs> around the um, food insecurity. We're asking how do we curb it? Now, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 1803 Okay, so um, Dee, you wanted to say something? Yes, so I like, I mean, the, the thoughts around um, the northern um, people, you know, doing the, the best that they can. But you see, um, that's one step. So for it to be successful and sustainable, then we must, as not just individuals, corporate organizations, business-oriented people, and then the government, we must look to the other value chain, the other you know, parts of it. So again, you talked about um, land. I would expect that we, we need to start looking at land reforms. You understand, you know, even in terms of tenure, land, re, um, land tenure reforms. But when a farmer farms, they've invested so much in farming. They know they're going to harvest. Where does it go? How does the farmer transport? So we, we need to look at infrastructure. Mm. Infrastructure plays a huge role. Um, you can't put food, perishable items, to move from the north. To the south, My three day. days. I mean, you talk about insurance, you talk about a whole lot. So the farmer bears the loss. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So they don't have the, the power to even say, okay, you know what, for my next planting cycle, I have the funds to do this, unless people step in. So, I mean, why are we not looking at train systems? Why are we not looking at infrastructure in such a way that we're able to distribute food across the nation? And no, no, we is, exactly, because by then the farmer knows I'm not concerned about selling my produce. Mm. Let me worry myself about planting. That's the work. And you see, let me even tell you something here, right? Mm. Just to add to what you're saying. If the government even took it upon themselves, mm. you know, so you can you can decide and I think at some point um, Yemi or Shibajo, they were talking about it. I'm not 100% sure, but they were talking about building those um, 
those storage yeah. facilities mm -hmm. for farmers to be able to at least if they are done farming they can you know you are you are sure of the things being preserved and mm -hmm. all of that because mm -hmm. the wastage have yeah. you been to mm -hmm. keto market the, it, i saw it that's another level of when they were bringing carrots, cabbages, have you seen the wastage? No, that's even just recent. Like, yes, yes, I saw it. It wasn't two weeks ago, it was even last week. Right? So, so we're we not even yeah. touching the wastage that happens. Then you, you touched on something very critical, which was the fact that the fair trade. Yeah. Diola, fair, trade. Mm. fair trade is very important. It is. That somebody has paid their dues, they've done the hard work, they've watched the plants grow. Then you now come and you are, you are buying those yeah. farm produce or peanuts. It is no a no. There should be a standard. Yeah, a price now, the price for being So, so yeah. now, eh, part of what I learned when I did that online course for emerging markets, mm -hmm. right, with um, um, Harvard, mm -hmm. they touched on a community in India. Mm -hmm. That community, they were known for milk production, right? Mm -hmm. The milk, they we, they we uh, milk their cows, and guess what? In the end, it's only maybe like two buckets. Mm -hmm. So the two buckets, by the time they will travel, by the time they get to who will buy it and all of that, it has it's sour. It, it, yeah. it's sour. So this man that was just thrown there, he said, hey, what will he do? He now looked and studied. So there were too many, so many things he considered. This distance to go and be, say you want to go and be distributing mm. your milk, he said, no, no. That one, okay, already they had to put this, a pasteurization center or whatever it is, to be able to collect those collection centers from them, from, them, from mm -hmm. the farmers, very close to the farmers. Then they were paying them mm. a standardized wage. Guess what now happened? The farmers were now able to buy better feeds. Mm. So the cow that would produce normally maybe two buckets, what the cows could produce four. Mm. Some cows could produce six in a day. Mm. So that was more money for the farmers. The farmers were happy. Mm -hmm. They were able to feed the, fa the cow's fat and they were also supplying the... Mm. Now, look at it many years down the line. That company is still standing in India. They're not only... Mm -hmm. They are not only supplying milk in the whole of India, they are supplying to other parts, parts of, of the, the world. world. I just don't want to mention the brand. Mm -hmm. Now, even the other value chain, pro buy products of milk, yeah. mm -hmm. like the butters and all of that, they yeah. have a, 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 a long list of mm -hmm. items. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Their farmers are extremely happy. Mm -hmm. See, the mm -hmm. farmers, the ones that could not even, they, are, they bought motorcycles, some of them are put. The farmers are happy, they are able to educate their children, they even provided healthcare, edu um, schools, you know, so it is a, it's an entire yeah, value chain. Yeah, so I like the idea that you're thinking holistically. Yeah. But then for me right now, train might be a stretch. Mm. Because our government, I don't, I don't see them understanding that this real system is a big deal and they must really prioritize it. Mm. Even if they don't solve the road problem, mm. right, without even the train, D. Look at it now. If you normally would take, I mean, we used to drive from Chaduna to Benin. Road trip, yeah. Yeah. trip five yeah. hours you're in Benin. Mm. But now it will take you forever to get to the to, to and where you're going. It's not just forever. There's yeah. security. security. Yeah. Yeah. Now they're kidnapping on the road. So there are so many layers of why this is a big problem. Mm -hmm. And as long as it continues, it lingers, our population continues to increase. Explode. I mean, they're saying that by 2030. Our, our population will be the second largest population in the world. I just they pray, say, make we never reach there. It's just so sad because we have the workforce. We have everything. We have everything. And I, the, the sad thing is we're very we, we're reactionary rather than being proactive. Right, yeah. Nigeria yeah. can comfortably, comfortably feed Africa. What is Africa? I, I mean, comfortably. Nigeria has like massive. What is Africa? It's just, it's, it's just prioritizing it is, a lot of the right things. In fact, you see, uh, for me, one of the things that I always say, and I will go back to, um, I'll go back to politics for a little bit. Um, I like the fact that you always talk about governance, mm. and I think that let me just say this: for the next election cycle. It is important that we are looking for people that are not just coming to talk about manifestos. If you want to be the governor, let's, let's stop this focus on presidency. Start with your states. You must give a blueprint of what you want to do. First of all, to increase gen uh, revenue mm -hmm. from your state. Do you understand? Because imagine if all northern... I don't even know why we're not doing major agriculture in the south here. Because there is land. Look at Ogun. Have you, have you gone to Ogun State? Have you seen the amount of land? In Ogun State. And it's just wasting away. He shows there. He shows there. You look at whole states. 
And people are saying they're so poor in this state. Everybody's depending on federal government's allocation. I, I can't I, I, I can't understand it. Well, this is a question I have. Does, is there like, I'm not aware of it, and mm -hmm. I didn't research it before mm -hmm. the show. Is there like a land loan system at work in Nigeria? Yeah. Where yeah. Someone you can, can do, loan. you can lease land yeah. for, so my friend, land for family. My, my friend Barbara, she, she has an Ofada farm. Mm -hmm. Um, so she had started off first of all with plantain mm -hmm. and plantains did not really do so well. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she then moved on to, in fact, every time she sees us, she says, ah, why are we buying land? Why are we buying land? You know, but she is actually operating on a lease structure. Mm -hmm. So they lease the land and it is, you know, after the harvest and everything, they share, they, there's a formula mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. But those options are available. Yeah, you yeah, understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I'm saying to you that for even the people that have taken mm -hmm. They, are, they painstakingly bought those lands. Mm. Why don't you give them C of yeah. yeah. Because you see, the C of is not because we just want to own the land. It is supposed to be able to it's have security. the capacity. Yeah. Yes, it's the capacity to be able to hand it over to BOI. Do you understand? Yeah. Back of industry or BOA, yeah. back of agriculture, to say, you know what? These are my needs. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. We want to be able to mount a, let's say maybe we could produce, like for us now, we are palm. Um, uh, palm oil, uh, um, oil. oil producers. We farm the palm, we also um, process Producer. it all the way to the bottle. Imagine if we could do maybe like a, a 500 liter or a, 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 a whatever, a thousand liter per day. If we increase our capacity based on the equipment and all of that, we can move that production to like mm -hmm. 10,000 uh, mm -hmm. liters, yeah. right? Sure. We're hearing that they are importing palm oil. It's an insult. Sure. The kind of things that you hear that they import to Nigeria is an insult because it's not like we do not have the capacity to be able to do it. Mm. So if we really want to get this uh, food and secure it, mm. right, we must first of all understand that certain policies when it comes mm. to our Greek, right, must be scrapped. Mm. Do you understand? So that you give some level of leverage. I heard, I mean, I'm not like I heard. I know the government gave out seedlings at some yeah, point. Yeah. They were giving out fertilizers at some point. They were doing all of those tasks to all those like farm communities, to mm. small stakeholder mm. farming. I watched a documentary on, on Plus TV. It was a documentary. I think somebody had done that documentary. I stumbled on it and I was watching it. And the lady, I think she's a, she's a fish farmer. And she was saying that, yes, they came. They collected their data. But since then, they didn't hear anything from them. So is this, do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When the corruption enters, like literally, if you want to do your corruption, carry and go another sector. No, that's that's what I'm saying. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because culture. you don't understand the looming danger that we yeah, have. True. Do you understand? True. So she said they came, they took their numbers, they, and this is what they do. They go to all the local communities, collect all the, you know, just to get data. By the time they get that data, they use and justify, okay, we have 10,000 farmers here in this community, 100,000 farmers so in this what community. What are you doing? To collect, you collect allocations to be able to hand over to those farmers, and then you but it doesn't get to them. Else. You know, mm. in the end, it is yourself you're suffering because if this uh, food scarcity Fun comes because it will come it's not a function of it it is yeah. when when it, when when it comes, comes yeah. it will hit everybody yeah. mm. and it is only those that have planned yeah. those that have prepared yeah. those that have gone ahead to say you know what let's have to build you know the way like uh, joseph did when he mm -hmm. built yeah, yeah. do you understand yeah. silos and all of that oh that's stop. another thing we yeah. need to work on storage facilities uh, uh, it's still the same value chain we're talking about it's, it's, so it's, there's it's, a lot that can happen so, so even your tomatoes it doesn't have to go bad yeah. mm -hmm. we can convert them we can and so this is where technology now comes in yeah. Yeah. do you understand yeah we can yeah. convert all of those things. We don't have to waste them. Yeah. The amount of wastages is a lot. Like literally, yeah, it, it when is, you see food wastage in this country, you will almost want to cry. Mm. Because yeah. we are talking about um, the fact that there's no enough food. Mm. They come and see the ones that go to waste. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And it's also causing a price hike. Because oh, if I produce like 100 cucumbers or 100 carrots and by the time they transport it from the farm to the marketplace I realized that 45 is spoiled I mean, I have to increase because I have to cover yes, my cost right? Course. So yeah. the remaining 55 that is there if I was meant to sell it for 10 10 naira I would end up selling it for 40 naira yeah, or something just to make up, so make exactly. up for that yeah. 40 that is yeah. missing Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Makes yes. sense Food security is, is as important as 
the security of a nation mm -hmm. because it's I mean at the core of what do you Israelites? If let's move in speak English because I I want to bring Bible call this matter. Jack Man, what do you call Israelites slavery? <laughs> Show that they all Jack Man from Israel now, because they were Egypt. They find their food, they can't go Egypt. Mm -hmm. But because that time they were in favor with government. <laughs> They can't carry their finish. Mm -hmm. Years later, when government we don't know them, remember? <laughs> because literally, yeah. Yeah. people will migrate to where there, there is food. Mm -hmm. Simple. Do you understand? Simple. So if we do not start to pay attention to this looming danger that yeah. will happen mm -hmm. if we don't pay attention to it, right? Mm -hmm. What eventually would it will mean? It will be that we will go cap in hand, begging mm -hmm. other parts of other nations of the world for food. Mm. You don't want to be in that position. And any country yeah. that is feeding you. Huh. Let's and take do comments. You think, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that part of the issue is because Nigerian youths are not as interested in... That's because the big they have not made it a attractive. lucrative it industry. Attractive. It, has mm. attractive. it has to be attractive. What we, we the, the narrative now is probably for people who are uneducated, people. So yeah. the very few people that are in that sector as educated people, young people, mm -hmm. they are not... Agriculture is a game of... is an industry of patience. Yes. You need to be patient. Uh, yahoo, yahoo. But I mean, if we if we keep selling the idea the that... gratification. Exactly. Yeah. Instant gra so they are looking towards where, oh, in the blink of an eye, let me make my you 10 million. You truly must be a patient I mean, person. Mm -hmm. You truly must be... And Agri it means that it must be incentivized mm. to actually get people and to so get you must to... also find patient capital. Yeah. yeah. A Greek is not the one that you yeah. you, I mean, you, you, you give has a loan. To be minimal. Very minimal. I mean. So that's what I'm saying. There are so many things. And this is not asking the government for too much. Mm. There are so many things that the government can put today as policies that you get better players in the industry. Mm. Mm. Do you understand? Incentivize it like Jola said. Mm. Remove all those bottlenecks, remove mm. all those bureaucracies. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay, let me quickly read this. Um, no country can function optimally without proper organization and structures. Curbing food insecurity in Nigeria can work if our government follow each state or region according to what it can naturally do. Everywhere in the USA is not a farm place. The government always encourage each state according to what it is naturally endowed with. Mm. In the US, the, the state of Wisconsin is highest producer of cheese and alcohol, and it is known for that. California area is very good in producing wine and other food crops, and it is known for that. In Nigeria, Bainway, as the food basket of the nation, should be encouraged by the government to produce enough food to feed the nation. This is from Sanctus. Thank you, Sanctus. Bainway is known for yam. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, they have really the good best. Yeah. Ah. the best. Yeah. And then the, the northern part, like they are so good at like you are you it's always corn season. I say there's the nothing you are looking for nothing in Nigeria. That you can't, yeah. There's no kind of crop you're looking for that we cannot grow. We have no business having this food is not in even in jobs, strawberries. Mm. If you see I mean, the kind of strawberries yes, that yes, come, strawberries, it's like juicy. Yes, yeah. 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 very juicy yeah. and like sweet. Big. And, and so if they pay attention mm. long enough, even the apples. Yeah. They'll be able to grow it in just because yeah. we just yeah, add the weather yeah, for yeah, it. The, the weather strawberries for in just are so big and cheap. I was like, what? This, this is what I buy at ShopRite for like a thousand naira. And we are it for two hundred. I'm like, no way. We are importing. We we. we oh, is it the potatoes? Oh, why so I beg. We this one not be fight. I'm telling, not be fight with the fight government today. We are just begging, please. This food matter, it will concern all of us. So yeah. So if there's any way that we can start to think, let's start to you know put heads together and mm -hmm. this is real real problem solving not um to be seen to be solving the problem we need, need to approach. solve the yeah. agricultural problem yeah. that we have in this country <laughs> ah moti moti what is that moti <laughs> talk finish <laughs> thank, you, Sansi, oh, talk, oh, talk, oh, talk. thank you Sansi. thank you thank you thank you now before we go please ensure you follow us across all social media platforms at Wish Your Africa, you can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements, like and share, invite your families and friends to watch and follow. If you missed our quote from Bill Gates, he says, innovations that are guided by small holder farmers adapted to local circumstances and sustainable for the economy and environment will be necessary to ensure, according to Buhari, that food security is the future. We get done, they talk about a Greek. <laughs> okay.
Okay. Oh. He started with mosquito. He started with mosquito, <laughs> went to health. No, he started with computer. Mm. And, uh, went to mosquito, went to health, now he's in a grid. Mm. Okay. Oh. Follow the money. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. <laughs>